All right, so there's a problem that many of us have faced, and that's having a Raspberry Pi image that's too big to fit onto the SD card. It could be just a hair too big uh, to fit onto your SD card because of the way that the files are located and the manufacturers, so on and so forth, or it's for a much larger uh, flash drive or flash drive SD card than what you have, and you want to shrink it down without having to buy a new SD card just to try out this image because you heard things that are great about it, so on and so forth. So, there's really only one hard and fast requirement, and that is uh, that your CPU has to support virtualization. As far as I know, maybe uh, v uh, Oracle VM has gotten better, but as far as I know, you need one that has virtualization. Uh, mine definitely does, so unfortunately I can't tell you whether it's a requirement, requirement or not. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is install... Um, Oracle VM and also daemon tools and you're also going to need a little bit of space in which to install a virtual hard drive for Ubuntu if I leave something out of this it's mostly to keep it on track for time because uh, a lot of this stuff if you're not sure uh, you could put it in the comments make maybe I'll make another video um, for some of the requirements but when you first set up the virtual machine it's going to ask you uh, what type it's going to be, the size of the hard drive. Now, one of the things that is uh, going to be important is you're going to go to this, see the picture of the little CD basically. You're going to go to your host drive, which is Daemon Tools. So I suppose you should actually install Daemon Tools first. Um, I already have it installed, so I can just open Daemon Tools, click on. This is uh, my Ubuntu image. It loads it into K. So now our virtual hard, our virtual DVD drive has Ubuntu in it. And when you click start, now when I click start on mine, um, it's actually going to uh, boot Ubuntu. But yours, you'll be greeted with the install. So you actually have to install Ubuntu um, just like you would if it was another PC. But you don't have to waste a hard drive and use a whole new the whole nother computer so on and so forth but once you get your virtual machine started you uh, are going to need to do a, a couple more things the first thing that's really important it took me a while to figure out is you're gonna have to click on this insert guest edition CD image of course once it's fully booted and uh, well let's see let's see what happens I kinda forgot for a minute so we'll see I think it opens a terminal um, insert guest editions. Okay, so if you want to click run, uh, I believe it opens a terminal and you, it basically makes it so that you can actually access the folders from your Windows PC. You can share a folder. So once you have that done, um, there may be another step that you have to perform. I don't know because I did this step before discovering uh, the guest editions. And when I did just this, it wasn't working. So I don't know whether or not you need to follow this step or not. Um, if you're getting a permissions issue still, obviously you will. <laughs> but in order to get this... Um, in order to get a shared folder to show up, which uh, you go to shared folders, I've mapped the root of my P drive, which is a large external, so that when I'm in here, it shows up here. Once you're able to get here, I've, I, I downloaded and put PyShrink right in here. Um, I hold down Shift and then right click and then open in terminal, and it just opens it right to. Uh, this particular folder. Now we have access to the shared folder which contains our uh, image that we're going to modify. Now this one is huge. I don't think I'll ever buy a 128 gigabyte SD card simply because it's just me. <laughs> I'm not going to play that much. So why spend the money and take chances with it getting corrupted so on and so forth. But this is the trouble that we have uh, just like if we're in Windows, we only have this .img uh, bit. What we need to do is mount this image and be able to access the 
folders and take things out. There are tools within Windows that you can download that will allow you to um, to view what's inside of an image, but I have not found one that would actually allow you to edit what is inside of it. And that's what I found. There's there's uh, several ways to, to do this. Um, you can do this manual mount minus T fat blah 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 stuff. This actually did not work for me when I tried this uh, exact um, uh, command line stuff. It didn't work. It said something about file system problems. So I assumed that it was dealing with the fact that we're running on a virtual machine. So I installed uh, Kpart, which is not part of um, your Ubuntu distribution. So you're going to have to use this command sudo apt-get install Kpart x. And then you hit enter and it searches the repositories and of course you have to enter your super username. Now since I've already installed this it's going to say it's already the newest version, so it's not going to do it for me. So now I can copy and paste this little section of this code. Oh, also, if you want copy and paste to work in your virtual machine, you have to go uh, to the shared clipboard. This will be uh, disabled by default, and you want it to be bi-directional, so you can copy and paste in between your real machine and your virtual machine. Now the file name is 128 gigabyte.img, very simple. Now when I issued that command, these are it's these are loopbacks which it's kind of heavy to get into, but the point is these two disks just appeared. Now this first one boot is that same partition that's available to you in Windows because it's a partition that Windows can understand, a FAT32 partition. Uh, and that's where your uh, config.txt if you wanted to tinker around with a couple of things. But where you're going to want to make choice uh, changes is in your RetroPy folder. So you're going to go to Home, Pi, and this is a much, much easier way. Now if you have an image that you just want to trim down, you, this, this particular part, um, you wouldn't need to follow these steps. You could have it hooked up to the network and you could uh, FTP into there. Uh, using putty or whatever you want and uh, and edit these particular files but the reason I like this is because this is a, a SD card that I don't have something that it fits so I go into ROMs and uh, a lot of the commands that work in Windows also work in in, in Linux like uh, control a selected everything and I actually copied all of these to a separate location and then I deleted all of them and then I copied them back uh, with a uh, empty folder structure. Now, now that I look <laughs> there and see one with a track, I may have chopped out too much, but this was mostly just, just for a tutorial um, anyways. To see the folder structure is back where everything it expects because this is already this image was one that's already set up you know all the emulators are set up and things like that it was just way too huge because it had too much information in it so I deleted all that stuff out and then uh, you can close this now you can eject these it says you know, that you can unplug them I eject them and I actually rebooted my machine when I did this before I took the next step I uh, rebooted the virtual machine I should say uh, the next command that I issued was uh oh it's not going to show up now isn't that funny <laughs> okay the next one that we're going to do is we're going to issue the pi shrink uh command which despite what it shows you here i have had to make a small change and i have to add the sudo the dot, the slash, pi shrink, but I also have to add the sh, which is the actual shell script name, and then the 128 gigabyte dot img. Now, when I go to if if I do just this, it will shrink the image down to the smallest uh, thing possible and keep the same file, just making it smaller. If you use this little bit of code here, and uh, say you have image file like um, if I wanted to make this have um, 6 gigabyte image, now it's typing 6 
gigabyte doesn't mean that it's going to be six gigabytes, but I know it's it's about that size. It would leave the original alone and create a new file called 6gb.img and leave the original alone. But since I had no plan to use such a large file, I just shrunk the original instead of taking up more space. But once you do that, um, you just have to wait. It takes a while, especially with a large image like that. It'll say relocating uh, sectors and, and whatnot. But when it's done, then you can shut this machine down just to be safe uh, so that it's not, um, that file's not being used by anything else. And then go to your uh, Windows 32 Disk Imager. Now I have a 32 gigabyte um, SD card in here, which is going to be D. And so we go back to the image on P, which is that even though it says 128 gigabytes, look at how big it is. It's just under 7 gigabytes now. And now I can write that to D, and uh, it'll re it'll resize after it boots. So that is the most straightforward way that I'm aware of to um, shrink a Raspberry Pi image using Oracle VirtualBox, installing Ubuntu, sharing the file, and then. Uh, extracting some of the data, making it smaller, making the image itself smaller or less full, I guess I should say, because it still occupies the same amount of space, and then running PyShrink to make the image itself as small as possible. I'll put some of the links in the description, and I really hope this helps somebody because I see this question being asked all the time. All right, thanks.